quickly found hypocomplement anemia. And once you fix the issue in the heart and once the infection is removed, the of course the complement levels bounce back. Now interestingly in the infective endocarditis, the uh, renal system also the, the kidney basement membranes uh, also develop the glomerulonephritis. So crescentic, uh, crescentic glomerulonephritis is seen there. So we will continue. Okay, so we are back. So bacterial infective endocarditis post streptococcal glomerulonephritis uh, of course due to the streptococcus here then viral uh, reasons. Viral reasons and in this one hepatitis B virus and then um, dengue fever hemorrhagic fever virus. So these viruses also can cause glomerulonephritis because of immune complexes that are formed and they go and settle onto the uh, kidney. So we have gotten some reasons for the glomerulonephritis due to type 3 hypersensitivity. Now let us talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is an interesting situation. So what happens is it is a chronic autoimmune that means our body thinks our tissue is antigenic. It is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disease of young women mostly it young women uh, but of course that is that can be different as well. So what happens is in rheumatoid arthritis is that let us say this is our IgG, this is our IgG. These women they produce IgG and IgM against the FC part. So this is the FC part, this is the FC part of the IgG. These uh, patients they develop IgG and IgM, IgM against the FC portion of the, of the IgG. These IgG and IgMs that are produced against the normal IgG of the patient, these are called RA factor or rheumatoid arthritis factor. So RA factor is nothing but the antibodies, autoantibodies produced against the antibody. My normal IgG, there is more IgG against the IgG or FC portion of the IgG. So that is called the rheumatoid arthritis factor or RA factor. Of course, in the active disease, you know that our rheumatoid arthritis comes, in, there are hills and valleys, patients sometimes are better, sometimes they have an attack of the disease. During the active time, the of course RA factor increases and of course complement reduces because when this would happen, when the activation would occur that would cause the complement to be fixed, right. And once the complement is fixed, hypocomplementinemia would occur and increased inflammation would occur. The interesting thing in case of rheumatoid arthritis is that RA or rheumatoid arthritis causes or targets joints pericardium and lungs. It can attack in other areas too, but these are the most common ones. So that is the RA. So again chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease prevalent in the young women affecting the joints, pericardium and lungs. Now on the other hand SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, that is also a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease mostly in the women, but this includes skin of the face and then it includes joints. So that is common with the rheumatoid arthritis and then kidney. So rheumatoid arthritis is joints, lungs and the pericardium, so chest area and the joints and the SLE is face, skin, joints and kidney. The other anomaly, the reason is still the same, there are autoantibodies against these tissues. In case of SLE though, the antibodies are not directed against the antibody, but rather these are directed against DNA. So there are anti-DNA antibodies, anti-DNA antibodies. The question uh, many students have asked me in the past that how do anti-DNA antibodies form? 